Um, greetings all, Last Outrider here with a surprisingly new video. Yay, I have crawled out of my relic cave, Valorant, League of Legends, Legends of Runeterra, and Chaos Conquest, 40k app for the phone, very, very addictive game, to give a nice update to Warhammer 9th Edition. Now, I thought about this video for a while, and I could go over all of the different sneak previews that they've given, but I think there's hundreds of videos out there which are already telling you and repeating that information. So instead, I'm going to give my unique standpoint on what I think is happening in the state of 40K. First, we have to look at how 40K has evolved over about the last 30 years. I'm going to give a brief history of that, and I'm going to show you how the developers have basically been pushing the game in certain directions with each editions that they're putting out. When Rogue Trader came out, 40K was really a role-playing game. It was designed for maybe uh, 6 to 12 models on the table, each one a superhero, each one with their own story, each loaded with their own personalized war gear. And each battle basically became a miniature role-playing session in and of itself because each character really had its own story. Um, <clears throat> that lasted for about 10 years. Then, then we started going on with third edition. Before third edition, there was a real kind of push to put larger armies on the table. <clears throat> the push to turn 40k into a war game instead of an RPG. And Games Workshop agreed with that and put out additions and chapter approved rules to put larger and larger, less personalized armies on the table. Third edition capitalized on this with detachments and leadership characters and uh, independent characters that allowed you just to flood the table. At that point in time, the impetus was really to create as large an army as possible. All of the codexes in the general rule books made it very clear. The more models you have, the stronger you are. It doesn't matter what they are. The general basic troop character in large enough numbers is the winning army. That's the message. Your small elite armies will always lose to the massive troop models. It took 15 years after that uh, of third edition and that message has sunk in. Uh, now every game is maxed models on the table. That's what it is, at least in tournament play. That's what it is. So that message has definitely taken root. It taken so much root that from what I can see, the pushback now is to go back towards the rogue trader days, which is what I think we're going to see with the 9th and 10th editions and 11th editions that are coming out. We're now going to have a, a push to, to develop the RPG roots of 40K, which have always been there because that's what it was originally. Now, they, they kind of had vestigial rules for this in the game. They've always had uh, campaign rules originally. Then they had um, escalation rules, which allowed you to start with smaller armies and, and, and build them up. Uh, then they added missions, which really were just optional. Uh, then missions became <clears throat> required, but not, not really the focus of the game still. The focus of the game, I mean, really for 15 years, 
playing 40k consisted of you putting your models on the table, the other guy putting their models on the table, running at each other and rolling dice, and the last model standing wins. That was a 40k game for 15 years. They've tried to change that with missions, but Meat Grinder was by far the most popular format of battle for 40k. I think now that armies have gotten so large that they just cover the table edge, they're, the answer to that then is to focus on the RPG aspects again, which is what they're going to do. That's what I think we're going to see when it's released. It's going to be a very scalable, mission-based, objective-based, hopefully skill-based game that that think of it as creating a video game uh, for the tabletop it's going to be take the objectives hold the objective it's going to be like playing dawn of war on the tabletop if i had to give an analogy it's going to be about uh, so that each we're going to try to get back to each game being a mini story again like it was originally how are they going to do that? Well, you're going to do that from what we can see by raising points and again making individual characters more uh, important and and more mission specific. So for one thing that's going to be great for eBay because that means almost everybody is going to be able everybody's army is going to be cut by about 30 percent so what are you going to do with all of those extra models that you don't need anymore you're going to get rid of them and they're going to go up for auction and for everybody who needs a new army this is your time so we saw that there's three levels of play. The other drive has also been to create a fixed time frame for 40K. For, for, for 10 years, they've tried to create a, you remember the 40K in 40 minutes? If anybody ever remembered that, that rule set, never really caught on. But um, there's, there's always been a drive to control, to put a time constraint on games that you can really just pop into a game store or pop into an event or somewhere and get a game done quickly and um, meaningfully though <clears throat> you know not just put a unit on a table roll dice and again last model standing wins so they're going to try to make it very mission specific Maybe they're going to have different scales of the game where you really can go back to focusing on independent characters, groups, um, uh, just a war band of independent characters going out in specialized uh, missions and, and bringing back like a, the original format of the game while allowing it to scale up to larger and larger levels. Now, yes, I know I've listened to these, the, the competitive sites and channels to say that they're still going to keep their 2,000 points. <laughs> you know what they're going to keep? They don't know what they're going to keep because the game isn't finished yet. Not only is it finished yet, but even when it comes out, we know the errata and the FAQs and everything are going to come out for the months after that. And we're going to have to get the new units and we're going to have to see the new models and we're going to have to see the new style of plays for each of the different types of armies and how those developed um i, I think putting the sisters of battle in the trailers probably uh, gives us a little uh, spoiler or a little hint that they're going to play um a bigger part in in the game but storyline driven play, I think, is going to be the focus of 40K for the foreseeable future. And that runs contrary to massive 
anonymous troop driven armies and 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 skill based play more than just number crunching the rules and points to come up with the you know highest the most efficient kill ratio and things like that but they've always wanted to make taking objectives and mission based games to be the the way you win more than just how many you know <clears throat> meltas can i get on how many how many units can i get to get the, that can punch through power armor so that i can take out the inevitable onslaught of space marine army lists that i'll have to face in any tournament the goal will be to create a game where mission objectives which will have to be accomplished with any variable types of tactics and army lists some might be uh, there might be missions out there where power armor is really not the ideal army type for 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 winning this type of mission and you're going to find that you know howling banshees and these light lightly armored highly maneuverable armies will dominate in this type of mission and maybe you're going to be able to give an option of customizing your forces between battles or between types so that your army list will actually be able to have several different options in it so that when you see the mission coming up you will then have to redesign hastily redesign your army for that type of mission and you might end up having different while you have one army list you will have different variations of that army list as you move through a tournament facing different types of missions uh, I remember personally when night fight came out it basically was a requirement for any competitive play that you had gear to prepare for a night fight mission which will is is required in any tournament play there will be a night fight mission if you don't have the gear a black sun filter a searchlights or something that can see in dark you're screwed when you hit that mission so they're going to bring about that mindset that you're something is going to be customizable between mission to mission so that you will have to tactically reorganize so your army list think of it like a collectible card game your army list is going to be uh, your pool of characters for you to pull from as you go and look at the mission and look at the tactics and look at the objectives and then you're going to say okay I'm going to take this unit and this unit and this unit and that's going to prepare me tactically for this particular mission in the game and your choices of how you do that aren't going to be based upon point costs and armor penetration it's going to be upon um, adaptability to the missions you could face in a tournament setting this now I don't know if ninth edition is going to hit this right out the gate you know be ready for this target but I think this is the target that 40k is evolving towards they might not hit it in ninth edition they might hit it in 10th edition I don't know but that's what they're moving towards is my point that's how 40k is evolving and I take that from looking at Age of Sigmar was definitely a push in that direction um, fantasy battle was always had that component to it which 40k lacked fantasy battle was always looked at as a more tactical game than 40k because of the positioning and the formations and having to you know decide when you're going to charge and for what angle and and uh, positioning your armies gave a tactical aspect of the game that 40k always lacked 
which is why it was always kind of looked at as a, a um, an inferior game in fantasy battle players' minds because it required less strategy. I believe 9th edition is going to be an attempt to bring strategy back to Games Workshop games now that fantasy battle is, is gone. So that is my individual take, my prediction, if you will, of the evolution of 40K. And I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, please put them below, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.